sciences in the universe. Cosmic rays are actually particles. They're actually little pieces of matter. They are the, the nuclei of atoms. The atoms uh, come from supernovae, and they're just the bare nucleus accelerated to very, very high velocities. I'm sure they were there all the time, but the only time you'd ever notice them is when you sort of got quiet, closed your eyes, and thought about it. And then you'd see them going off. There wasn't any pain associated with it. It's just sort of like a, a very spectacular uh, fireworks display going off inside your eyeball. When the astronauts returned to Earth, Pinsky took a closer look at Duke's space helmet. He found hundreds of microscopic tracks where the cosmic rays had tunneled right through. They are tremendously penetrating and do considerable damage to the molecular structure of whatever they pass through. And this is the reason why they're a hazard to, to people when they pass through you. The thought occurred to me, you know, if I was out here maybe a couple of years, uh, these little things burning a hole through my my head uh, might cause me some problems in the future, but we didn't worry about it, of course, on a short mission like we were on. But if a supernova is too close, it won't be only astronauts who will be at risk. It could kill everything down here on Earth. Our galaxy is packed with over a hundred billion stars, many of them near the end of their natural life. At least one or two supernovas explode in our galaxy every century. Two young astronomers from Caltech have now come up with a new theory of life on Earth that has shaken our scientific beliefs. A theory that links the death of stars to mass extinctions on Earth. The fossil record of the last 500 million years shows five or six huge extinction events um, in which anywhere from 60 to 95 percent of species on Earth, dinosaurs, reptiles, etc., were wiped out. And so what Gadam and I really set out to do was to come up with some sort of model that would explain why the major extinctions happen when they do. Eric Litch and Gautam Vasish have calculated exactly when the Earth may have been close to ancient supernovas. The key to their model was understanding the rotation of the Milky Way. Like a giant spinning wheel, the Milky Way is circled by spiral arms packed with billions of stars. Arms are really disturbances that sweep through the disk of the galaxy, and gas and dust tends to accumulate along these disturbances. Yeah, if you imagine looking at our galaxy face on, the spiral arms appear like swirls going out from the center to the outer edge, um, rather like the kind of whirlpool you see when water goes down a drain. The spiral arms are where supernovas are most likely to explode. Our solar system passes in and out of the arms once every 50 million years. We know the location of the spiral arms fairly well, so we could trace the orbit of the Earth back into time. The hope was to find a link between the times of occurrences, of the extinctions, and the timing of the passage of the Earth through the spiral arms. Their calculations revealed that the biggest mass extinctions correspond exactly with the dates when the Earth had passed through the spiral arms. If a supernova exploded nearby, 
the surface of the Earth would have been swamped by deadly radiation. If the solar system happens to be passing through a spiral arm, your chances of encountering a supernova explosion at close enough range to do serious damage to the Earth are quite high. Uh, in fact, we estimated something like 50-50. Understanding the mystery of just how massive stars die has taken astronomers centuries to unravel. Modern astronomers picked up their first clues from an unusual source during the Second World War in occupied Holland. Jan Duvendak, a scholar of ancient Chinese manuscripts, discovered a document written in China nearly 900 years earlier. It reported... On the 22nd day of the seventh moon of the first year of the period, Chiu Wei said, Prostrating myself, I have observed the appearance of a guest star in the fifth moon in the eastern heavens in Taurus. It was visible by day, like Venus, Pointy rays shot out from it on all sides. The account told of a bright star that had appeared in the heavens in the summer of 1054, which shone for 22 months and then disappeared. Duvendak realized the significance of his discovery. Through contacts in the Dutch underground, he smuggled a paper through enemy lines and across the Atlantic to astronomers in the United States. Twenty years earlier, American astronomers had discovered that a distant cloud of gas called the Crab Nebula at the fringes of our galaxy was expanding. By working backwards, they had calculated that it had originated from a single point some 900 years earlier, exactly the time of the Chinese star. Astronomers believed that the Crab Nebula was the debris from an exploding star, a supernova. But at the time, they had no proof. The Chinese star was so bright it could be seen in daylight, and for a time it was even possible to write by its light. What's more, the star had appeared in exactly the same part of the sky as the Crab Nebula. It clinched the argument. It had to be the remains of an exploding star. The blue glow of the Crab Nebula comes from escaping cosmic rays. The colored pincers are the remnants spewed out in the giant explosion. But for this star, the supernova explosion wasn't the end. Left behind was a strange corpse.